Sure. Okay, uh, so hello everybody. My name's Anthony, uh, General Manager, Head of Products at uh, Helix RE. Uh, I might sound, well, I am English, I sound English, I am English, but I'm based out in the United States in Silicon Valley. Um, fortunate that I could be here tonight, and thank you, 3 Repo, for slotting me in at the end, and so I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. A quick show of hands, was anybody aware of Flux.io? Okay, great. I just wanted to connect a few dots. So as you're probably aware, Flux.io no longer exists. We wound down the uh, real-time data collaboration platform about a year ago. Uh, and on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2018, uh, Flux.io became Helix RE. And actually, this is the very first time that we've spoken publicly about what we've been doing. Uh, if you go to our US website, you'll find some very you know, heroic images and nothing about what we're actually doing. But <laughs> I'm going to and lift the, lift the curtain a little bit and tell you about uh, what we're up to. And interestingly, hearing what everybody else has been speaking about today, I think that there's a lot of um, ways that, it, that what we're doing today can connect and can support uh, the kinds of things that uh, people are trying to do with their other software and applications. So without further ado. The mission of the company is still the same. I mean, Flux uh, was founded to apply cloud scale technologies, software technologies, to enhance the built environment. I, I'm a structural engineer by background, and I, I'm very passionate about the industry. I want to see technology improve uh, this industry. I want to see people have better relationships with buildings, see buildings perform better, to see us all as professionals in this industry have a happier time doing our work and designing better buildings. Uh, and that's very much still what uh, Helix is striving for. It's really coming of age now, this idea of the digital twin, whether you want to call it BIM, whether it's a 360 walkthrough, whether it's a 3D repo model. I mean, what, what is a digital twin? It doesn't really matter, okay? It's many different things to many different people. The thing that's really important is that companies such as IBM, Intel, Microsoft are now starting to talk about the digital twin. McKinsey are talking about the digital twin. This means that big budgets are now flooding into this market. And people are waking up. Uh, the very, very senior executives at the very top of, the, of these organizations. BIM is no longer a fringe topic. And this is very much uh, of the time. It's a very core part of people's digital transformation journeys. However, something that hopefully we might all agree on is that digital twins in the built environment require geometry. Hopefully, that's not a controversial thing to say. OK, okay you can come and find me afterwards if you do want to. <laughs> push back on that, but let's assume that for now. This is a, a map of ancient Rome. It's called the, the Nolly map. And as far as I've discerned, it was one of the first maps that started to go inside the buildings. And so maybe you can see you have all these kind of public streets, but then the churches and the basilicas, you can actually see, even down to the columns, all of the areas where people could kind of go and navigate freely. However, there's still a lot of black uh, areas on that map, and there are buildings, they just, they're just unmapped. Okay, maybe the design documents are in some scrolls, in some crypt somewhere. Um, but has things really changed that much uh, today? I would probably say that there's more interior buildings mapped in this map of ancient Rome than we could probably dig up of digital documentation for buildings just in this part of London. Okay? This was the big realization that we had. When we, at Flux, we're trying to build these tools to leverage digital data, digital models. 99% of the buildings don't have this data. Okay, we were serving 1% of the market, or maybe even a fraction of 1% of the market. So what would happen if we could digitize all of the buildings? Not just the ones that have design models, because they were you know, designed in the last couple of years, and you now have a, a Revit model or a BIM model or something. But what if we could leverage, again, technologies like Mission Room, 3D Repo, on all of the buildings, buildings that already exist? How could we do that? Well, again, quick show of hands. Who's ever tried to digitize an existing building from scratch? Was it easy? Was it cheap? Were you satisfied with the results? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well. I was, uh, I was watching the movie, uh, I say movie now because I live in America, uh, the film uh, First Man. 
And it reminded me of the, of the Apollo missions. Actually, I don't remember the Apollo missions. It was after I was born, but it's kind of somewhat similar, okay? Like there were, the Americans were so determined to put a man on the moon and there was an unlimited budget and they were willing to accept risks that, you know, sadly involved the, you know, the ends of people's lives. But like, it was possible. They managed to put somebody on the moon, right? And we're not doing that day to day today, but it was possible back then. It was possible because they tried so freaking hard, okay? This is the current state of affairs if you want to digitize an existing building. Helix is about turning this into the, the SpaceX of launching space rockets, okay? Where it's just a day-to-day -day thing. It's just something that happens. It's kind of like a, you know, the bus or the train just leaving the station. Oh, it's another rocket just going up to resupply the International Space Station, okay? Actually, just a little, little side note. I was trying to explain to one of our software engineers that, yeah, this thing that I was asking them to do, you know, it was kind of like a space shuttle launch. You know, like it's so complicated, so many things that have to take place for the desired outcome to, to happen. And I had to say, oh, actually, no, I don't mean an Elon Musk space rocket launch. I was talking about one of those old NASA space rocket launches. So, yeah, so when we want to digitize buildings, how can we make it, we say unbelievably fast. We are digitizing buildings so fast now that our clients are saying, how did you even do that? And I'm talking about clients that have in-house reality capture teams. It's inexpensive. We want to make this one-tenth of the cost or less of what it currently costs today. If anybody has numbers about you know, price per square meter to digitize, please let me know. I'd like some more data points. How can we make sure that it's accurate? Every single time, you're getting a consistent digital model. Okay, I, I, this is a, another analogy. It's like McDonald's, right? Why is McDonald's so successful? I know it's like, you don't want to shame anybody by admitting that you eat at McDonald's, but you go to any McDonald's in the world and you're gonna get the same hamburger. Okay, it's gonna taste exactly the same. Like, how do they do that? that? That's why they're so successful, because you go there, you know what you're gonna get. It's like Starbucks. And again, we need this to be the same case with our digital models. If we want to load them into these collaboration platforms, we want to load them into these 3D viewer softwares, we need to be getting consistently the same model again and again and again so that we can do all these kind of dashboards and, and, and cross-section of, of data. So Helix does this today with a, a mix of, uh, of technologies and people and processes. We have proprietary uh, software for processing very, very large uh, point cloud, 360 images, uh, these sorts of things. We're using off-the-shelf hardware. We haven't gotten into hardware yet. We don't intend to, but there are big innovations happening in the hardware space. Um, and then finally, we have our, our own in-house teams, our specialists, so that we can offer a turnkey uh, solution. Uh, eventually, we might turn over the technology to in-house reality capture specialist teams. That's certainly our end goal. But at the moment, for customers, if you have a building, if you've got a key, and the, the, the building, just give us the key, we'll go in there and we'll deliver a BIM model, a CAD model, PDF, 360 tool, whatever it is that you want. That, that is the turnkey solution right now today. So although we're a software company, there were big process innovations to be had in the speeding up of the delivery of these digital models. And so we naturally took advantage of those. Uh, one of those things is making sure we have a global footprint. If we're scanning a building in Silicon Valley, then we're post-processing the data in Singapore, doing QA in London, and then it's ready for the client the next morning. Okay, anybody can do that. And so we had to naturally do that, okay? There's no point trying to apply technology when are those sorts of things on the table. But now we really feel like we've squeezed all the obvious processes and hiring smart people and buying the latest you know, hardware technology. And now it's our software that's really accelerating and compressing the time to deliver these models. And so that's where our expertise comes in. We're a cloud company. We know how to leverage the cloud. And people are processing point clouds on desktop machines using desktop software, and it's a nightmare, okay? And these buildings, you can just see around, the buildings are getting bigger, and the point cloud scanners, they're getting higher and higher resolution, okay? So this is not a problem that's gonna get solved on the desktop level. So using things like computer vision, applied machine learning, and actually, my colleagues from the London office, do you wanna raise your hands? Yeah? So like these are our machine learning engineers, okay? They actually exist, I'm not making this up. <laughs> Please come and pick their brains and learn about how we're using machine learning to speed this up. And so just to wrap up, what are we, what are we doing today? What have we been doing for the last uh, year? We've been helping our clients, a uh, particular client here in, in Mountain View in the Bay Area, uh, faced with 
a renovation project of one of their existing buildings. They need to get their staff out of there, get the building renovated, and get them every, all, everyone back in ASAP. And every day that that building's out of operation is an enormous amount of rent that's going lost. So we need to take this and turn it into this as soon as possible to facilitate their projects. And that's what we're doing. This uh, particular floor plate, 6,000 square meters, we scanned it in under a day. And we delivered the project back in six working days to the client. That's the kind of speed that we're already at. And we've got a mission this year to compress that down to two working days or 48 hours at scale. We deliver this in a very simple you know, online platform. There's nothing particularly unique or special here. But again, we now have uh, lawyers, we have quantity surveyors, plus the engineers and the architects that all want to get access to this information. And so we provide it in easy, accessible format. But there's absolutely nothing to st stop you just downloading these, these files in Revit format, in this format, that format, CAD format, and then loading them into tools like 3D Repo, and then starting to exploit all the value that you can get out of those tools on your existing buildings. So thank you for your time. Uh, you, we've just actually launched our UK website today, so helixre.co.uk. Uh, and feel free to, to get in touch or chat with myself or one of the London-based team uh, over drinks after this. And thanks again to 3D Repo for slotting me in at the end. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you.